What's up everyone, here's the start to yet another episode of my new series where I attempt to fill as many collection log spots as possible on my maxed ultimate Iron Man account. In the last video I told you all that I want to grind Barbarian Assault in an attempt to obtain the rarest pet in the game which is the Penance Queen pet and that has a drop rate of 1 in 1,000 here. Uh, currently though, I am sitting on 150 total gambles, and I also have enough points saved up to do about another 20, uh, so hopefully I can just get the pet now and be done with it, but we'll see. 21 more gambles completed, bringing the total up to 171. Per usual as well, there's all the items that I got from the gambles in my inventory. A ton of them this time too ended up being Torstals, 13 seeds, and 21 herbs, which uh, when I farm the seeds is going to be like 140 uh, total herbs. I think that puts me up to maybe like 400 total Torstals. Like it, it's going to be a lot by the time I'm done. Well, here's another clip of the usual random stuff that goes on at BA that I really can't explain. Came down the ladder and someone decided to plant flowers all the way down the entire hallway. And just like last time, here's the loot from another 21 gambles. Uh, sadly, no torsos this time, but a ton of Alks. And I was also able to complete another elite clue that I got from here. So let's go ahead and open that. So nothing really from this, but there's uh, actually something that I can do with this dragon necklace that I just got. And I remembered that a little earlier on from uh, looking through the diary stuff. So I needed to enchant this into a skills necklace and then charge it on the totem pole in the Legends Guild to complete a task on the Artie Hard Diary. In the last video, I mentioned that um, I wanted to try to learn more roles and I was slowly working on learning all the intricacies that go into the defender role. And if you look at the chat here, I just got my new personal best on the defender role, which is 13 minutes and 34 seconds. So I'm slowly improving on that over time. And there is 16 more gambles, which pushes me over a total of 200. Yet another large amount of gambles this time, I did 24, which uh, I believe might be the most I've done at a single time so far. Just finished alking all the stuff that I got from the last 24 gambles I showed you guys, and it ended up being a huge amount, uh, 736k, so... Uh, all those are adding up a lot. My cash tag is almost near 10 mil now too. Well, here's already another personal best is the defender roll for me. Uh, 40 seconds better than my last one. This one was 12 minutes and 54 seconds. Uh, so a pretty big jump on the personal best there. Uh, per usual as well, huge shout out to everyone on my team this time. And literally the very next run, I get a PB again with the same team. Uh, it wasn't too much. It was only three seconds, but uh, still crazy to get them back to back. Here's another total gambles milestone for you all. This is going to be a 250. All right, I know I've been showing a ton of my new PB runs, but this one in particular is pretty crazy. This is my overall new fast run, and that is 12 minutes and two seconds. Incredibly close to being sub 12, which sucks. That would have been pretty wild to get. Of course, just like the last time, a huge shout out to everybody on this team. This is by far the most insane group of people I've done runs with. It was pretty crazy sitting there watching the healers going from full HP to uh, getting spam poison down to uh, no health in like three seconds. 279 total gambles now and another elite clue to open so that's 20 elites completed and per usual with these elites another master clue to attempt okay so i am currently on step number four of this master clue and i got the um stash unit for the arc light and the amulet of the damned i'm not gonna lie to you guys i was thinking about dropping this i actually recorded a clip saying i was gonna drop it and then i thought a little more about it honestly like the scepter it's probably worth me just going and doing this um, and getting it filled since I have the clue step anyway. So I'm going to start off here with getting the arc light. Um, in order to make this, I need to get three ancient shards. Uh, if you guys watched my full UIM series, I had like 80 of these or something saved on me and ended up dropping them because I didn't think I'd plan on playing this account, which really sucks because now I need to go and get three of them again to remake the arc light. Could go and barrage warp jellies. Uh, that would be really quick. And I'd also be able to get um, a lot of hard clues from that. Uh, that would burn through a lot of the runes I have saved up, so I'd rather not do that. Uh, instead, I'm going to opt for going for Hellhounds since they drop uh, hard clues at the same rate, being 1 in 64. And they're super AFK. I think um, on average with the amount of kills I get here, it should only take me four hours to get all three of them. And along the way, um, hopefully I'll get a decent amount of hard clues to be able to do as well. And there it is, the first hard clue, only 46 kills in. Uh, I think for the most part, I'm just going to try to stack all of these caskets up. And by the time I get all three of the shards, I'll just open them all at the same time. If I stay on the rate for all the shards, I should be able to do a little over 10 of these. All right, I already got a emote clue step here with a stash that I didn't have built. And for this one, I needed a uh, rune heraldic helm, rune plate legs, and a rune spear. Thankfully, from the uh, very few amount of hard clues I've done so far, I did manage to already get a rune heraldic helm. So I can go ahead and build the stash here. I don't have too many hard stashes built. This is, I believe, the sixth one. Let me check. 
uh, two, four. So yeah, I've built six out of the 15. I can do most of these for the most part. I'm just going to be building them as I get them as steps. So yeah, there is another one completed. So here is yet another hard stash that I can fill. This one is pretty easy. It's just a blue dragon hide body and some van braces. Uh, so I went a little bit over the drop rate here to get my first Ancient Shard. It took me 300 on the 260 drop rate. Uh, so not too bad. I'm also already up to 7 total uh, hard clues completed. And uh, here is yet another stash built. This one is going to be for a Rune Halley, a Rune Plate Body, and a Strength Amulet. Well, this is something I didn't think would happen. I got all three totem pieces before even getting my second shard here, which is uh, funny because every single one of those totem pieces is a lot more rare than just getting a single shard, and I managed to get all three of them. Also, you'll notice that the uh, totem top I got was actually a collection log for me as well because I never really held onto the pieces when I was doing Slayer here uh, since my inventory at the time I had like uh, two or three open inventory slots and also if I recall correctly from back then if you ended up dying at Skatizo your loot wouldn't spawn outside of the instance it would just get deleted so um, if you died there, you'd basically get wiped and have nothing left on your account. So I didn't really want to risk that back then. Wow, so, uh, three different combat achievements from this single kill. I got an easy, a medium, and an elite task done here. I also got an ancient shard, so I only need one more of those. And on top of that, another hard clue that I can go do. So here is another stash built for the hard clues. Uh, this is going to be nine out of the 15 total. Bro absolutely no way this just happened what is the drop rate on this dude i just got a smoldering stone from normal hellhounds it's a one in thirty two thousand seven hundred and sixty eight chance dude what what and that is wild man there goes literally all my rng for just eternity man so now that i'm thinking about it this drop is actually really really nice for me uh because i can go to my stash here that i have my dragon axe stored in the master stash and I can go ahead and use the Smoldering Stone on it, and I can turn it into an Infernal Axe. Now, the reason the Infernal Axe is really, really nice to have is because, I'll show you guys on the screen here, uh, it's one of the requirements for Master Clues that Fallow will ask you for. This and the Armadillo Helmet are like the only two that I really wasn't able to do. And thankfully, I can also store the Infernal Axe in this stash here. And even when it runs out of charges, it still counts for the Fallow step, so a uh, huge upgrade for Master Clues in the future with that. All right, there it is. All three ancient shards obtained. I went really far over the drop rate, and I only ended up getting two of them from Hellhound since you guys saw me get the third one from Skatizo. I took 1,200 kills just to get two of them, and if I was on the drop rate for just those two, it would have taken 500, so I went like... 2.5 times over the drop rate. But yeah, the first step here, I have to go back and get the dark light from Surprisin in the Verrock Castle. And then I can head over to the center of the catacombs and use it on the altar with the three ancient shards to create my arc light. And finally, looking back at the master clue step, I now need to go obtain an amulet of the damned to complete the stash. But first, I want to open up all of these hard clues that I have saved up. So in total from that grind, I got uh, 200,000 attack XP. And this is, of course, on shared. So I got about 800 thousand total xp uh also 19 hard clues this is a lot more than i was expecting going in i was thinking it would only be about half of this uh, but 19 is going to be a lot especially since there's still items from hard clues that i need for stashes uh so in particular here i'm going to be looking for a rune heraldic helm two rune heraldic shields a zamorak full helm a crozier and a stole so uh, a few items that i need um, hopefully I can manage to get like one or two of those from these. So let's go ahead and open the first one here. Uh, from this one, it looks like I got a uh, duplicate unique. Uh, next one, Zami Bracers. Nice. And uh, that's also the 20th hard clue. So let's keep going here. Uh, next one, nothing. Uh, this one, a few uniques I already have as well. And uh, from this one, nothing as well. I had to take a little break there to go and get more nature and I forgot how much uh, alkables you get from hard clues. So let's continue on here. Uh, nothing from number 24. A uh, Sarah Domin Full Helm. 12 more left to go. Um, that is the second, I believe, Master Clue book I've had. And uh, there is a Zamorak Kite Shield as well. 10 more left to go here. Uh, there is 28. Peaceful Blessing. This is actually the final blessing I believe I needed. Um, yeah, so that's every single blessing completed. Uh, only four more left to go. It looks like they're all pages for, uh, to finish out the shared log. Hey, there we go. There's the uh, Rune Heraldic Shield that I needed a couple clues later. 
Uh, like I said, I still need one more of these. Um, in terms of the stashes here, I could store this at the Agility Pyramid with a Mystic Robe Top. And now down to the final three clues. Wow, that is crazy. Ancient Dehyde Body and uh, Zamrock Plate Lake. So still, once again, the wrong Zamrock item, but a uh, crazy double clue there. And down to the final two, a Magic Comp Bow. I can actually, I'm pretty sure, use this for barb assault um i think this is going to be better than what i'm using now but i have to talk to some people about it so that actually might be an upgrade for me with what i'm doing and the final hard clue here a guthix plate skirt so i got a pretty decent amount of uniques from um all of those uh you can see the big pop-up in the chat now too <laughs> look at that uh so in terms of the hard clues now i have a total of 17 out of the 134 uniques so uh not bad getting some more stuff on the side there uh, while going for the arc light. Also, it looks like uh, in total I made around a million GP from all of the Alks. The first step in the process to getting the amulet is going to be doing a hard trek from Bergdorot, and then I'm going to be selecting the third one. And as you can see from this, the uh, very first encounter that I get are shades. And this is the exact reason that I'm doing this. These specific remains that they drop, I'll be able to use these to skip a lot of the early on um, things of the Shades of Morton minigame to be able to get a higher tier key. And that'll give me access to more of the catacombs. Uh, this will give me a silver key, which is one under the highest key being gold. Uh, normally, if you didn't do this, you'd have to go through like four other keys or something, killing different shades and going for those keys. I did that for the master clue when I had uh, this step uh, then, and it took me like an hour or so. Uh, shout out to the clan chat for letting me know about this. It saves a ton of time. So after I get those, I need to cut an equivalent amount of either redwood or magic logs. And once I have those, I'm going to be using my Mori legs to teleport back and then we're running north to the temple. From here, I need to go into the general store and buy some olive oil, and the goal now is gonna be to turn this into sacred oil. In order to do that, I need to kill these lore shades that are outside of the temple. Uh, you can just go to the Morton Temple Repair minigame world, and there's usually like 10 to 15 people here, so the temple is always completely built. And then I'm gonna be killing these shades to raise my sanctity, and these go up 2% each one I kill. Once my sanctity is high enough, I can use the olive oil on the fire to create the sacred oil. And each time I do this, it's going to drop my sanctity, so you do need to uh, keep killing the lore shades to continue making these. And finally, when I have all of this, I'm going to use the sacred oil on the magic logs, which will turn them into magic pyre logs. And then I can use these with the remains to light a funeral pyre. Also on the screen here, I'll show you the possible loot from burning these. Currently, I'm looking for silver keys because those are going to give me the best chance at getting the amulet. Okay, once I have the keys, I can head a little bit more north and there is an entrance to the shade catacombs here. And from here, I'm going to go to the section that has the silver chests I can open. So um, this minigame at a glance is kind of confusing. Uh, but uh, each chest has a different color associated with it. For example, if you look at my inventory here, I have different colors on the top of my silver keys, and there's chests that correspond to the same colors. So, uh, of course, there's going to be a silver chest with red on it that corresponds to the silver key with red on it, and so on. Also, each color chest here has about the same drop rate. They're all 115 with like a little bit on the end, so they're basically all the same chance of uh, giving me the amulet. And also, as you can see from the new collection log item I just got, there's also a chance of getting fine cloth here. From the silver chests, it's like a rate of one in seven to one in nine, uh, depending on the color. And what I can use these for is creating split bark. Uh, if you guys remember from prior videos, uh, I need pieces of split bark to fill some of my elite stashes. I believe two split bark bodies and one pair of legs. So if I get lucky on the way to getting this amulet, I might be able to make one of those. But yeah, I'm just going to be repeating the entire process that I showed until I get the amulet. Hey, there it is already. Only took me, uh, you see in the chat there, about 30 minutes or so. So it's relatively quick grind so i was looking at the rate for fine cloth here and it's actually like two times more common to get fine cloth from these so um in the future if i actually end up getting a split bark step i'll just come here first and make the split bark piece it'll probably take me less than an hour to make those uh but yeah for now i'm just gonna be moving on and i'm gonna go and make this stash so there is the full detour completed i can now build this stash here uh, and that is going to be two four six seven uh seven out of 22 master stashes total built uh, hopefully I can finish this master clue as well. It's going to put me on step five here. This one ended up being a full eight step master clue. Thankfully, I wasn't screwed over on the last step here and I was able to complete this. So uh, this is, I believe, the sixth master clue. So let's go ahead and open this one. Uh, sadly, no unique from that. There's not too many uniques um, you can get from masters. So I'm not really expecting another one for a while. But now with all this done, I can head back to Barbarian Assault. 
one gamble off hitting a total of 300, and I also have another elite here to open. And per usual, just a bunch of junk loot from that one. Well, up to 331 gambles now, and as you can see from my inventory, I got really lucky once again with a ton of Torstals. Uh, this will be well over 100 by the time I end up farming them, and I did also get another Elite on top of that. Elite number 22, and nothing really, but maybe like a little over 100k in Alks. Alright guys, so I'm currently at 331 gambles, and I have enough points to do about 6 more, so I'm going to be ending the video here on about 337. Uh, I started the video at 150, but I did still have the 20 gambles already, uh, so technically I did 170 in this video, so uh, about 80 to 90 hours total of BA in this video. A uh, huge shout out here to RFSU and WD. RFSU has uh, three pets on three different accounts. So yeah, I'm going to continue doing BA and just doing stuff on the side. Uh, next video, I'll probably try to get some quests and uh, diaries done while doing BA, so... Um, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying these still, and I'll see you in about another week for the next one.